spot, two, two. No, I'm, I'll put it on, but let's get the rest of it going first. So here, let me get uh, first in. Yeah. Everybody just started. You got a big battery for the camera, or are you using a small one? I got the, um, whatever was in the bag. <laughs> yeah, I'll put this one here between innings with the base. You have your Wi Fi going? Yeah. Go one, three, three. Here we go. Okay, okay. This is semi or quarter? Oh, okay. This is semi or quarter. Oh. 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 I, but I sent it to you, I, uh, with this first name. I sent Matt a text and just let him know that we'd probably be starting a little late. Okay, just as a heads up. You are the best. But he's aware of that. Ready. Not ready. Come on, let's go, kid. Let's go, two six. I just said ready. Boy, We gotta be really careful when we have foul balls. Initially, I always get the camera blocked. Okay, I got a clipboard. So. Larry, I might need you to move to the right of me. Yeah, wherever you guys want to move. I just need him here for wiring purposes. Yeah, just over here. Well, I'll move. I'll just swap places. Uh, you gotta choose the event. Oh, okay. Ah! Okay. 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 Oh, Larry's head set up and going. Yeah. Where is the event? Is that under streaming setup? Uh, yes. Okay. Primary stream, sure. Connor, let's go, kill, let's go, two, six. Eight, two, six.
welcome to the Division II South quarterfinal game between Dighton Rehoboth Falcons from Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School. We'll have more to say about Dighton Rehoboth a little later. And the Hopkin and Hillers, who are the five seed today, playing the four seed. Hopkin Hillers coming off a victory on the Monday. Josh Fisher went the distance against North Quincy, defeating them three to nothing. Pitching today for the Hillers is Vin Papura, number 16. Playing third base is Connor Kelly. Ball low. Nick Park is playing shortstop. Cam Jarrett in second base. Andrew gone at first base. Left to right, Cooper, Mulvaney, and Tyler Morse today patrolling right field. Behind the plate is Dylan Locke. Papora, six foot six, drops down to the side, pitches out of the stretch. Oh, the hitters don't quite have a lot of time to see the ball, and there's a base hit in the right field. A little bloop. A little blooper by the leadoff hitter, Miles Mendoza. So the Falcon lineup is Mendoza. Prey, Culpa, Lafleur. No, no relations. Patello, it's a called strike in the outside corner. McCarthy, Agresti, Supranad, Kinberg, and Robotai. No, you Los Angeles Kings fan, no relation. I got to check on whether Robotai's. Hitting because McCarthy is a DH today. We got a little late start because of somebody. We'll get into that a little bit later in the broadcast. Technical I was issues. on time. There's a fastball inside. Sorry. Technical issues. No, there was no technical difficulty. <laughs> I was out in front of your house for a half an hour. And I could prove it on my iPhone. A little lead by Mendoza. Ball outside. Lock pops up. Dylan Locke likes to throw behind the runners. You know how I feel about that. Can be dangerous. Off on the ball goes in the outfield. There's a strike on in the inside corner. There's Papura's fastball. I have no idea in the breakdown of these Dighton Rehoboth hitters. Righties, lefties, there's a fly ball in the center field. Fairly deep, Mulvaney tracks it down, gets it into Baharik for the cut, one down. And does the scampers back to first. So Tom, I took the back roads to get here. And let me just say, Tom, that we are not in Kansas anymore. Certainly not. Uh, I did go over a railroad track on the way here and went by Bullwinkle's Country Store or something like that. Didn't see a gas station, so I might run out of gas on the way home. Uh-oh. Uh, a little bigger lead over there at first base. Pick over, and oh, I thought he had him on the back of the shirt. That was close. But I got the uh, umpire, base umpire says no. He got in. Another pick over. Less good than his first one. Tries to snap one off outside. If Prefer gets his breaking stuff over, he could be pretty deadly. But otherwise, he's working with a fastball. Just missed on the outside corner. Home plate umpire Farrington. Don't know where he's from, but 
we import our umpires at Hopkins in from Fort Lauderdale. The called strike. The top of the first, Paharic attempted a bunt. was thrown out by the catcher. Ooh, high cheese. His touch is low 80s, Vin. Doesn't throw as hard as Josh Fisher. There's a swing and a miss. You can sit down, but at least he didn't get caught looking. You know how I feel about those caught lookings. So, getting back to what happened in the top of the first, Dylan Locke single to left, a hard single. And then he was uh, erased, attempting to steal second base. Score that play, 2-6. Locke tried to pull that one in, and Connor Kelly is not going to get his dinner tonight. He got caught looking. by Robitaille. Look at these Oakland A's uniforms they scammed the Rawlings rep for. They got a 43 on the team. He must be a Dennis Eckles League fan. There's a fly ball in the right field. Bernie gonna go and get it. Ball drops. Bernie kicks it around. There's a throw into the middle of the infield. Pahari gets it. I thought Mendoza would be at home plate on that. And that wasn't Bernie, that was Tyler Moss. He hasn't got a lot of playing time out in right field this year. We had such a crazy start. We were missing camera equipment. Cubs down five minutes before the game starts, a little crazy. And there's a strike poured over the middle by Papora. Runners on second and third. For the Falcons. Down low and away. Dighton Rehoboth beat Duxbury. Pretty happy about that on a walk-off double. Here's a ground ball in front of home plate. Papura going to get it. Nobody covering home. And the throw to first base is good. Dylan Locke showing his throwing and leather skills. Nice play. Score that one. 2-3. So at the end of one full inning, we have no score. You are watching Hoppian and Hiller's quarterfinal Division South baseball on HCAM TV.
top of two. Cam Rubatai towing the rubber for Dighton Rehoboth today. You know, you know where we're near, Tom? Somerset, Berkeley. <laughs> we could talk about that later. Seamus, Bonnie Seamus, uh, ducks out of that pitch. Got a couple of, uh, looks like basketball players throwing today. Robitaille, a little shorter than the break of pitch. Back to the screen. Looks like he's 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 and Papura is 6'6". Six, six. He'll be Hopkins number one next year. That's almost a certainty. Unless Coach Simos plucks somebody from another school. And there's a strike. Ronnie Sheamus heading to Rollin Co Rollins College. He's not going to play next year due to a Tommy John situation. Takes that pitch upstairs. DH in the day. Matt Cooper on deck. Oh, we get a lefty in the lineup at least. Right on the knuckles, foul. Just a little bit in front of it. Nice day though, I'll tell you. I'm looking for a cloud. Tom, you see any? I don't. Clear Hello, skies. Okay. Temperature is at 77 degrees. Just a gorgeous day out there. How do you know that? Uh, the HCAM Weather Center. Ah. So Seamus will take the walk. He's got good speed. He's got blazing speed, as a matter of fact. He might be the fastest kid on the team. Not today. And he's being pinch run for because of his blazing speed. I'm blocked out, so I can't see the number, but we do have a pinch runner for Ronnie Sheamus. Nice unis, I got to say. See, Hopkins, I think, are sporting the Nikes today. But. There's a bunt laid down. That's a beauty. Oh. That's the second decent bunt laid down. That pushes the runner up to second base, but I thought he'd have that one beat. But Igo says no. He bangs him out. Thought he was a little early with the call, but doesn't matter what I think. Kim Jarrett, one of the captains, heading to Clarkson next year. Well, Hopkins is called strike on that break of pitch. One of Hopkins' star hockey players this year. Tom Nappy would know all about that, having called the games in the COVID rink. Shortstop playing cat and mouse game at second base. Nothing doing. Don't try and use reading glasses for distance because there's a ground ball the shortstop. Shortstop picks it up, throws to first. He's out by a good step and a half. Mason Culpa, no relation to home plate or major league umpire Ron Culpa. Right. Lead run 90 feet away. Tyler Morse, he's been clutch this year. Is a breaking pitch from Robotai. You remember Luke Robitaille from the Los Angeles Kings, don't you? Sounds Lefty very shot. familiar. Oh, 
Tom, I'm too old for you. I think he's in the Hall of Fame. There's ah. a pitch right down Broadway. Looks like we have a pitching battle on our hands here today. So far. Robitaille pitching out of the stretch with the runner on third. That's his choice. Ball outside. Did not see any fast food restaurants all the way down here. I took the, I think the only way you could get here through the back roads. Nice block by Kinberg. No score, top of the second. Dighton Rehoboth, Hopkins and Hillers. Foul ball. Slashed foul. Whenever Coach Simos has asked Tyler Morse for something, he's been able to deliver so far this year. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. Infield playing shallow. Ball upstairs, good take. Andrew gone waiting on deck, the ever so dangerous one. Watch out for a pass ball or wild pitch. That's inside. Bends them back, so we have runners on first and third. Morse got good speed. Kinberg going to flash some signs to his middle infielder to see what they want to do should Morse take off. Morse has got a choice of stealing the bag, getting caught in the pickle. Got good speed on third base. Small lead by Morse over there at first base. Ball high, 1-0. That's a one-step lead over at first. We'll see if he gets a, that's one and a half, one and a half step lead over at first. Robotai backs off the rubber, takes a peek. Morse has got to keep a, an eye on that back leg of Robitaille. If he lifts up that back leg, he knows he's going to get back. There's a ball upstairs. Home plate umpire Farrington isn't buying either catcher, pulling down balls, trying to frame him. He's legit. They get the good umpires for these playoff games. Not that the other ones are lousy, but, you know, you have different skill sets, right, Tom? That's right. You know, they're usually a little bit slimmer, um, these playoff umps. Just saying, I, they wouldn't let me um, but due to my issue. Morse got a little better lead over there first base to the plate. Fouls up in the air. Oh. Pitcher gets that one. Robotai. Everybody kind of stayed away. So nothing doing. We're going to head to the bottom of the second inning. You are watching Hopkin and Hiller's playoff baseball on HCAM TV.
bottom of the second inning. Uh, there's a hit by pitch right off the bat. One pitch, one base runner. Mikey Agresti, the first baseman, stepping in. Here's a strike port over the outside corner. Papura's got sneaky velocity. Certainly does. Josh Fisher does not have sneaky velocity. There's a bait. Oh, there's a line drive back to Papura who erases the runner. Not his fault, really. That ball was stroked back to the box. Werner was frozen at first base. Well, he wasn't frozen. He was just off the base. You know, freeze in 77 degree weather, but it is a double play. 1-3. Everybody was standing still. Had a boy Farrington. Oh, I shouldn't disrespect the home plate umpire. That was a good call on the outside corner. Yeah, it's a second hit batsman this inning. Of course, he's not doing it on purpose, but it's a little wild. Well, Purpura likes to throw on the inside, and sometimes that happens. Yeah, well, oh well. Did we get an EMS crew down here just in case? No. <laughs> Tyler Kinberg stepping in. It's a good name for a catcher. Remember Jim Sunberg? I for the Kansas not. City Royals. Ah, you're too young for that. It's an inside pitch. So far, the bright, right, <laughs> the, the Dighton Rehoboth runners haven't got a good read on Vinny Papera's pickoff move. The ball low. Dylan Locke helping his pitchers out all the time. Excellent defensive catcher. They hand out gold gloves. He should get one. There's a swing and a miss by Kinberg. Outfield playing very deep for him. He's hitting eight in the eighth in the order, ninth. The strike. So I wonder if Coach Simos got a little 4 1 1 on the Falcons. Is strike three. You're looking. No, no swingy, no hitty. Right, Tom? That's right. <laughs> Put it in backwards K for Kinberg. So at the end of two innings, we have no score in Dighton, Rehoboth. And you are watching Hopping and Hiller's Baseball on HCAM TV.
top three. We got a pitcher's duel going. Nothing, nothing. Cam Robotai, Vin Papura. Bottom of the lineup, Cam Mulvaney stepping in against Robotai. Going to turn the lineup over. There's the breaking pitch outside. His breaking pitch is kind of a rolling breaking pitch. Not much bite. Not much velocity either. Yeah, there's a pitch inside. That's payback from a hit batsman in the previous half inning. What do you think? I think bean, so. bean brawl? Yeah, you never know in a playoff oh, game. Yeah. It gets intense out Could there. Could get ugly. Same color uniforms, everything. Paharik, first inning, tried to bunt his way on. Not successful. Mulvaney with good speed. We'll see what uh, Robitaille has for a move. He picks over. Mm, doesn't show much on that first effort. But if you've been watching all year, pitchers normally throw their worst pickoff move to the runner, and it gets better, and the third one is their best. Ball low, and that's going to move Mulvaney up. That's back to the screen. Mulvaney takes a big wide turn at second base. That was a 60-foot fastball. Didn't make it the extra six inches. So that bounces right off the plate and over the head of Kinberg. Nothing he could do about that. Shortstop banging his glove, trying to keep Mulvaney close. And there's another hit batsman. Two for two. I don't know, Tom. I don't know. It's getting ugly, getting ugly. I don't think that was. Yeah, come on. You... <laughs> Manager going to go have a discussion with Robitaille. They got warm-up action in the bullpen already. I did my research. You know, there were two families, the Dighton family and the Rehoboth family. They had a uh, sort of a row probably 150 years ago. The Dightons were having a barbecue. The Rehoboths came over. Old man Rehoboth stuffed, you know, stole a hot dog from the Dightons. And it was all over. I'm not sure if that story is nope, true. No, that's a true story. Really? And then they hyphenated the town because the town folk at the time couldn't decide what to do. And it's Dighton Rehoboth. You know, sort of like a, you know, like an election, 50-50. So they just put a hyphen in there, and nobody's got the advantage. Dighton, Rehoboth, it's right near Somerset, heading towards the south coast. Somerset, home of, oh, color man Jerry Remy. And a couple of boys that played field hockey uh, that came into Hopkinton. A couple of boys playing field hockey. That's right. There's a fly ball into center field deep. Mulvaney going to tag on this one. And he tags center field that throws. And that's not going to be in time. Not cut off by the shortstop. Now they're going to say Cam Mulvaney left too early. They're pointing at second base. Let's see whether they appeal or not. I mean, they could try it. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like it. No, it didn't look like it to me. I mean, he had plenty of time to tag. No, but we'll see what happens. He's got to step off the rubber if he wants to do it. And it doesn't appear that he wants to do it. So he's got to be a pitcher first and then disengage from the rubber and become a fielder to throw to a vacant base. He's not going to do it. He's going to come to the plate. Ooh, Connor Kelly takes a big rip. He had a stand-up triple in that game against North Quincy. Right there, Tom? He did. And he was erased. Did not score. Was quite the poke. Warm-up actions still going on in the 
Dighton and Rehoboth dugout. They're not going to take any chances. The winner of this game will have a home game and play the North Attleboro Rocketeers. I'm not sure I like that name for a baseball club. But look over to first base. Nothing doing. Baharik has got good speed. Got one out. First and third. Baharik takes off. And third hit batsman of the inning. Well, dead ball. Now the bases are juiced with one out. Are they checking for sunscreen on these kids? Make sure they can get some grip on the ball, or what's the story? I don't believe so. No? What are they called, spider dust or something that's going on in the major leagues? Well, I guess uh, pitchers can't really even put sunscreen on now in the major leagues. Wouldn't they, wouldn't they get a sunburn? <laughs> well, here's the big DH Ronnie Sheamus. Boy, he can open things up with a hit. And he does just that. He gets hit right in the coconut. Not much up there, but he gets an RBI. And the fourth hits batsman of the inning and the second mound visit, I think. And the first run. I don't know. I'd, I'd uh, see what's going on here. We're going to have a relief pitcher. When we come back, we'll get the name, number, all the particulars. You're watching Hopkins and Hiller's quarterfinals Division II playoff baseball on HCAM TV. Jamison Hughes going to take over for Robitaille, who hit four guys this inning. We've been doing this a long time. We've never seen four HBPs in a game, never mind in an inning. Bases loaded, and ball is in the dirt. And here comes Paharic, and that ball is out of play. Looks like Paharic sporting a little uh, cactus under his chin there. That's a that's something new. Playoff beard. Well, I, they didn't notify me. I like to do my research before the game. But uh, yeah, runners on second and third, and there's a pitch low. Kinberg couldn't do anything with the previous pitch, but was able to block that one. Now, top three seems to be. Uh, 
Nice inning for the Hillers. It's a ground ball foul. That was just wide at first base. Yep. Matt Cooper, Vin Papura, who's been sitting on the bench, not getting cold because it's very warm day. It's going to warm up. So not much 4-1-1, I'm told, on Dighton Rehoboth. And there's a fly ball, fairly deep to center field. And a tag is made. And Connor Kelly scores his second run of the inning, third run of the inning. A fly out to center field if you're scoring at home, F8. Ronnie Sheamus still at second base. Not sure why there's not a pinch runner for him, but hey, I'm not the manager. Cam Jarrett set to face. Oh. I don't know. This inning, we got some wildness from Dighton Rehoboth. Falcons. There's a pop up over the right side. First baseman heading over towards the out of play mark. Makes the grab before he heads out of bounds, out of play. So at the end of two and a half innings, we have a score of 3 0 Hopkinton over Dighton Rehoboth. You're watching Hopkins and Hiller Baseball on HKM TV. The ball comes out a little late for the hitter's eye. There's a fly ball or foul ball over the batting cage. 
Not a bad crowd, Tom. Although I'm looking for some familiar faces and I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed in the Hopkins and Hiller turnout for fans. The ball outside. The whole town at Dighton Rehoboth is here. Uh, if the Hillers do their job, who bounces one in there, Papera. Uncharacteristically wild there. If the Hillers could do their job, Tom, they'll be back at home Friday. And Friday is tomorrow, isn't it? That is correct. And it's a walk by Prey. Culpa struck out in the first inning. Throw over by Papura. It's a semi juicy lead. Wasn't huge. Strike port over the outside corner. I don't know, being down 3 nothing, whether they want to test Dylan, Dylan Locke's arm. He has been absolutely deadly this year, throwing out runners. Another strike call to Culpa. Coach Simos wanted some length out of Vinny. Burned some innings, seven inning games, these playoff games up high, pulled down by Locke. Be a decent battery next year, Vinny and Locke, and it is a swing and a miss. Second K for Culpa today, Culpa K's. We got two outs, pick over, lazy pick. Lafleur, the cleanup hitter. There's a pick down at first base, back pick, excuse me. Not a fan, if he overthrows that, he'll be on third base. Oh well, I don't make those calls. Pop up out of play. Did you bring your glove today, Tom? I did not. I did not dress for the occasion. It looks like you didn't either. Dark <laughs> clothing, dark shorts. There's a swing and a miss by Lefleur. You think he's French? Uh, quite possible. Yeah. Not Irish, certainly. Here's a ground ball to Paharic. Throws, boots it. Oof. He's had trouble with those grounders. Did not pick it clean. When he got it, he threw to second base to Jarrett, who dropped it. We have to go E6, Tom. I know you don't like tossing out errors, but. Well, I agree in that case. That ball was relatively easy to handle as far as a chance is concerned, so you got to give him an error. Ball low. Block just saved a base. It's nice to see the Hillers play on something other than turf. It's a strike call. You know how I feel about turf, right? I think everybody knows at home how I feel about turf, but natural grass, and that's what happens.
you don't get true hops, there's a big cut. You get nothing. Big cut for Xavier Botello. Oh, Locke wanted that one. Could hear Papura grunting that one out. Put a lot of mustard up behind that pitch. No scoreboard to look at here. The ball's a strike, swing and a miss. Strike three. You're gone. And so are the Dighton Rehoboth Falcons. After three innings, the score is 3 0 Hopkinton. You are watching Hopkins and Heller playoff baseball on H Camp TV. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to go alive. It's just not working. Hey, Larry, we found the Hopkinton fans. They're all over there. What's that? All the Hopkinton folks are over there. Oh. Now it won't even go. Are, are we not doing anything? But nobody at home is watching anything? No. We can't go out. There's so we won't, we won't connect to Hopkins. No. It won't connect to, it won't even go live now. Won't even go to your phone? Check the event. Hey, Andrew. Get ahead. Did we end the broadcast by accident? I hope not. It's still there. Okay. I think if we ended it, it wouldn't be there. I think you're right. That's the only time I've ever seen it that I try to start and it just stops it immediately. Hey, but Wendell. You get a message saying this event is done. All right, it might be going out now. <laughs> I think doing that event thing might have worked. Let's see. Jesus. Oh, my shoe's caught. Have you ready? Tyler Moore stepping in against Jamison Hughes. The Battle of the Sixteens, Papera and Hughes, the foul back. I'm told that the Hopkinton crowd is filled in towards the first base line. I was giving them a hard time for the sparseness of their attendance, but I've been corrected. There's a break and pitch in. Pretty decent one. See if he's going to go back to back. Dighton Rehoboth finds himself down. 3-0. There's a foul back. Don't worry, Tom. I would have been on that one. Don't worry. Andrew gone on deck. Big, strong, powerful first baseman. Ball's up high. 1-2 to the count. Outfield in. Tried a curveball, but Farrington wasn't biting. Little floater. Hardly any break to it at all. Maybe it's a surprise pitch like that one right in the dirt. Kittenberg's getting a workout behind the plate. But he's got the tools of ignorance on. That's why they give him chest protectors and knee pads. There's a foul ball out of play. Another pitch wasted by Tyler Morse. New eggs given to umpire Farrington. I don't know how many eggs they get per game, but probably a dozen eggs. Lost. There's a ground ball to third base. Picked up, throws over to first. Xavier Botello over to Mike Agresti, erases Tyler Morse. Cam Mulvaney waiting on deck. 
It's going to take a, a look and see what Jamison Hughes has for stuff. Sees a little lazy curveball. Take it by Andrew Gaughan. There's a fly ball in the right center field. That is going to be over the head of the right fielder. Here goes Andrew Gaughan. He's going to tag second and stays on that pillow. A big shot over the right fielder's head. Jaden Lafleur could not catch up to that bomb. Nice stroke by Andrew Gunn. I told him off air, get a hit, will you? He did just that. A nice deep hit. The, the bearded one waiting on deck. Cam Mulvaney trying to knock in Andrew Gunn and takes a pitch on the back. That's a fifth uh, hit batsman today. Fifth or sixth anyway. That one probably didn't tickle. Nick Pahara can do some damage here. Center field is playing very shallow. Pahara's got good power. And there's a breaking ball. The third straight batter. He started off with a breaking pitch. So maybe that's what he wants to do. His pitch sequence is breaking pitch and fastball. Fly ball in the left field. And that ball is caught. Andrew Gunn scampers back. Jacob Supernard. Not a very difficult chance out there. Dylan Locke. With runners on bases, this is who I want up, Tom. Absolutely, he has been clutch all season long. I don't know whether they know it or not, but he's a pull hitter. And if he has been watching the last three hitters and he throws them a little rolling breaking pitch, he's going to clean it out. Let's see what uh, Hughes does. Right in the coconut. Oof. I don't know. Get the sunscreen. Some wild <laughs> pitching today from... Get your Tylenol. Hey. Get your copper tone out. I think Dyer Hobus trying to argue that the Hillers hitters are leaning into pitches. Oh yeah, I, I don't. I like a facial see that right happening. in the dome. Connor Kelly with the bases loaded. Right fielder playing imperfect. The ball's gonna bounce away, but Kinberg gets it. Hughes doing his job covering home plate. Two down, bases juiced. Three nothing, Hopkinton. Foul ball. Connor Kelly, if you've been watching all year, he's got really good power. And that right fielder's playing a little shallow. Playing him right off the line, but he's playing a little shallow. And he got burnt earlier. There's a ground ball. The Second base, throws over to short. So Mendoza to Culpa ends the inning. You are watching Hopkins and Hiller's playoff baseball on HCAM TV.
three to nothing could be much worse. Yeah, despite three batters getting hit last inning, they were able to get out of it. Yeah, you would have put that on a reel. <laughs> All the hit batsmen right in a row. Right. Couple of head shots. Ball low. It's baseball, not bean ball. No, no. Not at all. Prepare pitching a good game, and he hits his second batter, I think. No, his third batter, I think. I don't know. It's a little comical at this point. Nobody's got hurt, but. Then Papura wanted that one. That looked good. We got a girl softball game going on. I don't know where there. Nice uniforms over there. I checked it out earlier. One on one. Mikey Agresti, first baseman. There's a ground ball to second base. Flipped over to Paharic, over to Gone, not in time. Score that 4 6. Fearless choice. Jacob Supernard, the left fielder. Score could easily be 6 to nothing at this point. That was a nice stab by Dylan Locke. That was heading for the screen. Let's keep your eyes on the runner, Vinny. That was a check, and I think he went, oh. Come on, Igo. I would have called that a strike. I don't know how he can see from 90 plus feet away. Good pick by Dylan Locke. You've been watching the College World Series at all? I have not. Ah, watch tonight, seven o'clock. Former Boston High School, Boston High, uh, Boston College High School phenom Michael Vassell is gonna try and keep Virginia alive against Texas. He turned down a chance to go in the top 15 in the MLB draft in 2018, I think, to take a scholarship at Virginia. He cost himself about uh, four and a half million dollars. Yeah. And now he's trying to prolong Virginia's season. There's a big cut and a nothing. Tyler Kinberg. Outfield playing him very deep. There's a foul ball back. Yeah, so the other night, Virginia had a pitcher go seven and a third, no hit ball. Gave wow. up a walk and a, I think a base hit and then some kid named Tanner, they're all named Tanner down south. It's a three run bomb off him. Strike three, caught looking, no swingy, no hitty. And now there's two down for Dighton Rehoboth. They were the five, the four seed. They were ahead of uh, Hopkins and Drew, or they? They were the four seed, yep. Yeah, and they played less games in Hopkinton, but got a higher seed. Yeah, it's all about winning percentage. They did it that way this year due to the COVID uh, interfering. With yeah, well, it's probably the MIAA sticking it to the Hopkins and Hillers. You know how I feel about that. There's a ground ball to third base. Picked up. It's going to be tagged. That's a five unassisted if you're scoring at home. Score is three to nothing. Hopkinton over Dighton Rehoboth. You are watching Hopkins and Hillers playoff baseball on H Camp TV.
and Hughes out there for another half inning. It was bullpen activity earlier for Dyke and Rehoboth. It's winner go home, these playoffs. It's tears or cheers. Ronnie Sheamus, the DH. See if Hughes throws, starts him off with a curveball. Yep, that's what he's been doing. That's been his pattern. Should have lost that ball. Excellent power. Slashed foul over near the coach's area. So, Tom, we got uh, six hit batsmen uh, for Dighton or Hobbit and three by Hopkinton. Is that what you got? Yes. Total of nine. A little beanball action. Oh, Ronnie took a look at that one. He took a long look. He could have been walking back to the bench. He would have been an unhappy young man. There's a fly ball in the center field. Center fielder going back. And he dives and doesn't get it. Jameis wheeling around the bases. And he's standing on the second base pillow. What a clout. Hendricks pray didn't have a prayer. Oh, I did mean to say that. So Ronnie Sheamus loses that ball, almost out. A nice dive by Prey. I think it went off his glove. I got blocked out by Igo, the umpire. Bunt pulled back. Third baseman not charging. Third baseman angled a little bit towards second base, trying to see what happens. Ball high. Letter high, he lays off. Coop finds himself up in the count, 2 0. Hughes is pretty predictable, gotta say. 3 0. First pitch curveball. Almost every hitter he's faced. His fastball might be 75, my guess. High strike. Farrington's been pretty consistent behind the plate. Neither team parking. There's a ground ball over the shortstop. Sheamus goes over to third. Almost a bad base running decision by Sheamus, but he got away with it. So Mason Culpa takes care of Matt Cooper. A little sacrifice. Now the infield is playing in all the way around. Just in case there's a contact play. No, I'm not sure there'll be a contact play. I got my reasons I'm not gonna say. And there's a rolling curveball. Not even close. The infield is gonna try and throw Seamus out should he take off for home. And there's a, he's gonna get home because that ball's down. Prey picks it up and watch Ronnie Seamus touch that nice little plate. And it's four to nothing. Nothing cheap there. Certainly not a good piece of hitting. And the Hillers have a real opportunity here to take charge of this game. See what the run game does. 
They tried it. It's a delay. The throw down to second base, and he's in there. Delay steal by Cam Jarrett. Surprised Kinberg. Double clutched it. Shortstop Culpo wasn't there nearly in time. Tyler Morse can do some damage here. Awful quiet bench over there at DNR, DNR Regional. Is that rolling breaking pitch again? Been pretty effective for strikes though. Foul ball out of play. He did that three or four times, or four or five times in his previous at bat. A little late. Culpa and Mendoza playing a little cat and mouse with Cam Jarrett trying to keep him close. And there's another hit bats person. Uh, DNR Falcon manager coming out to have a discussion with Hughes. I think we're going to have a pitching change. Number 20 looks like he got up. And he's coming in to replace Hughes. When we come back, we'll have that pitching change. Actually, the right fielder's coming in. And number 20 is going out to play right field. So you are watching Hopkins Hillers Playoff Baseball on HCAM TV. Top of the fifth, we have Jaden Lefleur, the right fielder in now to hurl for the Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School Falcons. We got Rebello on right field. We'll get you his first name in a minute. Andrew gone stepping in double the last time. Takes his first pitch up and out of the strike zone. Tyler Morris at first base, Cam Jarrett at second base. We get a third base coach anxious to use his right-handed wing to wave in a runner.
This pop up in the infield. There's an infield fly call. Batter's automatically out. That's the rule. First, first, second, and third. Less than two out. Ball hit in the infield. Catchable ball. Batter is automatically out, even if he drops it. But the runners can tag if they want to. The runners can advance at their own risk. Cam Mulvaney up. Nick Paharic waiting to jump in there against LaFleur. And there's a bunt up the first baseline. Mulvaney, <laughs> he bigs it out. What a, a chop bunt. Fielded by LaFleur. Surprised him a little bit. Bunt single. Moves the runners up. Bases are loaded. A two out bunt. They were not ready for it. I wasn't ready for it. That was the last thing I expected was a bunt with two outs. Well, when you have the speed of uh, Cam Mulvaney, it's certainly uh, not out of the possibilities. All that we need is Nick Perrick to uh, yank one down the line. Yeah, that's a block by Kinberg. You know, I'll bet you Somerset Berkeley and Dighton Rehoboth, both regional schools are rivals come football season. I believe you are correct. And I'll bet you there was a bit of a razzin with those two boys playing field hockey. Imagine that. Oh, inside, just missed him. I got a little scared there. I thought he was going to get hit. It would have been an RBI, though. Dylan Locke would have taken it. He's a little tired watching kids get hit. He's waiting like a hungry lion to take a piece out of Le Fleur. Fleur stares in at Paharic. There's a line drive right back to the box. That'll retire the side. The end of four and a half innings, it's four nothing. Hopkinton, you're watching Hopkinton play off baseball on HKM TV. Hendricks Prey, who made a uh, very nice attempt on a bomb hit over his head in center field. He's going to lead things off. Vinny Papera doing pretty well with his pitch count. Now he's up to 69 through four and a half innings.
First two pitches are balls. Pray Culpa and LaFleur. Two, three, four hitters. Umpire, home plate umpire Farrington calls that a ball. Papura wanted at least one strike out of those first three. Dighton and Hobel's got to do something. They're running out of time. Oof. And that's the 11th hit batter. That one hit him, I can't say where, but it hurts. And that had some uh, sizzle on it, we'll say. I must say, this has been a strange game. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you put them all in slow motion and put the little counter. It's 11 by my count anyway. I don't know on our electronic uh, scorekeeper here. <laughs> wow. No sign of the athletic trainer, so Prey's going to stay in the game. Culpa, the shortstop, see what he can do. Yep, definitely the Falcons going to make some hay any way they can. Ball outside. I don't see any warm-up activity for Hopkinton. I think Connor Kelly would be next out of the shoot. Should Vin get in trouble? Ball up and away. 2 0. Little noise out of the Dighton Rehoboth crowd for the first time today. It's a strike. Center cut fastball. Vin looks like he's getting stronger the longer the game goes on. Very late swing by Culpo, the number three hitter. You're right, it almost seems like his velocity is going up. Yeah, he's in that middle slice of the game and there's a swing and a miss. He can go back to the bench and think about it. One down. He might not have another chance to see Vin Papera. Jane Lefleur is going to <laughs> dodge that pitch. We we're working on a dozen. Yeah, that be might be a uh, MIA hit batsman record. Ball way outside, 2 0. Ben Prepared gave a little look over to the bench, the coach. I don't know if there was a message there or not. Maybe he is tiring a little bit. Ball low. I'd like to see the Hillers return back to field two next year, Tom. I don't think I could take another season on the turf. <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, that decision's not in my hands. There's a called strike. Three and one. Pray over there at first base, staying pretty close. There's a fly ball in the center field. Mavini running in on it. And no, nope, it's caught by Tyler Morse. I got blocked out a little bit, you fans at home. Mavini took off after it, but Tyler Morse had the angle. There's a called strike. Pull back a little bit. This is Xavier Botello. It's a great baseball name, Xavier Botello. Kinberg's had to work a hell of a lot harder than Dylan Locke behind the plate. Ball upstairs. 
Prague kind of hanging around first base, first base, not making really any attempt to take off. Doesn't want to run into an out. Ball inside. Yeah, working on a dozen hit batsmen in one game. There's a big cut right back by us. Count is full. Will Dighton Rehoboth cut loose? Pray. Oh, that looked close. Botello draws a walk. I wonder if that's going to bring out Coach Simos for a quick talk. Doesn't seem to be any movement from the Hiller bench area. One down. Two down, two on. Two down, I missed an out. Yes, I did. You had the strikeout by... Uh, That's right. That's right. There was that K. Yep. Out in and the flyout, fly yes. I was getting lulled to sleep. Not because the game is boring, but the sun is beating down on my black hat. Getting a little woozy over here. Well, you're getting a nice tan. It is a called <laughs> strike. It's not even one of those car tans where you stick your arm out the window. It's a. I could use some sunscreen, Tom. Do you have any in the car. I will take a gander. There's a ground ball to second base. Flipped over to Paharic. That retires the side at the end of five innings. It is Hopkinton four. Dighton Rehoboth Regional High zero. Top of the sixth inning, two, three, and four do up for the Hopkinton Hillers. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing very well. Oh. Well, I mean. Look, look who we got. But besides the number of technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unfortunately, we weren't able to stream the game, but it will be up on our YouTube page. Look what we have here. Refreshments. And there's no refreshment stand here. And we'd like to thank the very nice Hillers fan that brought us some cold refreshments. That wasn't a DR fan? I need a taste tester. Make sure. <laughs> you know, sometimes they can be a little sarcastic. The Fleur set to deal, wind up and the pitch. That's hit in the air, left side. And it is in foul territory and out of play. Think he pulled it a little bit? He was out in front of it a little bit? I think so. One and one count now on lock. I wonder if Arnold still gets royalties for his iced tea. <laughs> this is light, by the way, just in case my doctor asks you if I'm keeping my diet. There you go. Lock one for two on the day. And he put, fouls this one off. 
That was a bit of a hanger. I'm sure he wanted to face Jamison Hughes watching his uh, pitching pattern with the leadoff sort of rolling curveball. Got great power, Dylan Lock. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, they get the out. Six to three for out number one. That'll bring up Connor Kelly. Yep. Connor Kelly got some words of encouragement from Coach Simos. Couldn't hear exactly what was said, but probably said, put the ball somewhere where they ain't. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, and John Ritz here at Dighton Rehoboth High School to bring you this game. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Kelly is 0 for 2. The run scored. He was hit by a pitch back in the third and scored one of the three runs that inning. Wind up and the pitch. A little outside. A little bit. A little bit outside. Looks like uh, both teams are letting their uh, catchers call the game. Don't see anything from the uh, dugout of uh, DNR. Here's the 1 1. Inside and low. DNR would be Dighton Rehoboth. I figured. Kind of an old school, isn't it? Looks like Milford High a little bit. Hit in the air, left side, foul territory, and ranging over, unable to make the catch, is the left fielder. Mr. Supernard gave it a good go, though. The ball was tailing away, though, off the left-handed batter, Kelly. He certainly did. He almost had it. Yeah. Didn't give up on it. Ronnie Seamus waiting on deck. He's been busy today. The floor is set for the 2-2 pitch. Ooh. And they're going to ring him up. I oh, I don't know about that. I think it was close. That pitch... A left-handed batter, and he's called out by first base up. I don't know about that. <laughs> he's about 110 feet away. That'll bring up Ronnie Sheamus. He is 0 for 1 with a run scored. He walked and also drove in a run. Well, I was blocked out, so I couldn't see it, but I had to call it a check. Wind up on the pitch. There's a strike. Well, Fleur's getting in a groove. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike. Look like you want to pull the trigger on that. The 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss, and that'll wrap up the inning. After five and a half innings of play, it's Hopkinton 4, Dighton Rehoboth nothing. You are tuned in to Hiller's Playoff Baseball on HCAM.
Emperor's advance of tomorrow, Wack is going to have somebody do Legion. Bottom of the sixth inning, seven, eight, and nine hitters due up for Dighton Rehoboth. Vinny Agresti stepping in. They call him Mikey. Or Mikey Agresti, excuse me. Mikey Agresti me. looks at a strike. Purpura set to deal. A little outside, one and one. We got media all over the place. We do. It's a big game today. The only thing we're missing is a satellite truck here today. We could have used one of those. <laughs> Was it beam the signal to our viewers at home? Oof. Oh, there we go. There we get the dozen. Are we going to get some warnings now? And Coach Simos heading out to the mound. See if he takes the ball or not. Well, that's a dozen hit batsmen today by my account. You got your work ahead of you. Jacob Supinar due up. Mike Bernie looks like uh, he's about ready to cross the line, but he's told to go back. I'd imagine if he hits another batter, uh, he'll probably be out of the game. Coach, that's one visit. Umpires are very diligent. They want to make sure that coach doesn't want to, coach doesn't make a mistake and takes one too many mound visits. So that's one for Coach Simos. Leg left and the pitch. There's a strike. One on, no outs, here in the bottom of the sixth. Four nothing Hopkinton lead. That pitch outside. Supernard's got a brother, just so you know, that plays on this team. Little outside, two and one. Little grunt behind that one. I think the leash will be short for Vim Papura. There's a nice pitch, two and two. Grabs the outer corner of the plate. No rabbit ears on Vin Bavur. Bench is getting a little loud. The inside cheese, but a little too inside. That'll fill up the count. He went for a little extra on that one. Maybe he was told you gotta get the next batter out or you're done. A hair outside and the walk is drawn. And Coach Simo is coming back out and this time he's gonna take the ball. And we'll have a new pitcher here for the Hillers. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hillers leading Dighton Rehoboth four to nothing on H Camp.
New pitcher for the Hillers. Mike Bernie into the game to take over. Got a pinch hitter, 24. Benny Perpera pitched a very solid five plus innings, but he's, the book is still open on him with two on. And we do indeed have a new pitcher for Dighton Rehoboth. Pitch inside, one and oh. So I was mentioning to you during the break, I haven't seen Mike Bernie pitch all year. There's Newman at the plate. There's a strike. You foul tip that one or is that just a pop of Dylan Locke's mitt? I believe that was just the pop of the mitt. He's got a sneaky good fastball. Fouled into the backstop. One and two. Bernie's played a good outfield this year. Been clutch with the bat. And this is hit in the air towards center field and caught for the first out. Runners stay put. That'll bring up the top of the order for Dighton Rehoboth. Do I like that? A kid that comes off the bench cold, it's thrown in to the fire, and he's over backing up third base in case of an overthrow from Melvaney. Fielding his position, which he doesn't pitch a lot, I imagine. Miles Mendoza steps in. Wind up and the pitch. Nice looking pitch there from Bernie for strike one. Runner at second's getting a pretty juicy lead. Bernie did get a fair amount of work on the mound during the senior Ruth season last summer. Little high, one and one. Hopkinson took the district championship in the senior Ruth season. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike, one and two. As he's working that outside corner. For somebody of smaller stature, he's got some pretty good juice. Certainly does. Leg lift and the pitch. Breaking pitch, fisted in the air and caught by the first baseman, two away. Had a lot of spin on it. Now there's four outs left in Dighton we're hoping the season, unless they make some hay here. I'll bring up Hendricks Prey. Center fielder. Bernie working from the stretch, two on, two outs. Nice breaking pitch for strike one. Had a way to start him off. He wasn't looking for that. Bernie throws the second runner back. It's a little dangerous. Leg lift and the pitch. Oh, Ooh, uh, I don't know about that Come one. Come on, Farrington, he got to have that one. That looked like a nice pitch to me. Yeah, I'll second the motion. One and one. There's a strike, one and two. Prey gets the bad news from Farrington. He's got at least one run in scoring position. Wind up and the pitch, a little outside. Two and two. If Prey whiffs, that'll suck the life right out of the Dighton Rehoboth fans. Wind up and the pitch, fouled off. 
over to the softball field behind us. Pray the number two hitter, so he's no slouch. Line up and the pitch. Grabs the outer corner for strike three and out number three. And we will head to the top of the seventh with the Hillers leading four to nothing on each cam. No swinging. Top of the seventh inning, Matt Cooper coming to the plate for the Hillers to face the floor. And there for his second inning of work. Winner of this game will host North Attleboro tomorrow. I can have some fun with the Rocketeers, can I? If you'll let me. Cooper, Jarrett, and Morse. Gonna face Le Fleur. Line up in the pitch, fouled away. One and one. Ooh, that Ooh. hit a car. Did it hit a white one? Small white one? Actually, I think it hit a bus. Oh, uh, that's all right. <laughs> and then the bus fell on the white car. <laughs> <laughs> Leg lift and the pitch. Down in the dirt, two good, and one. Good take. So getting back to the playoff picture, North Attleboro is the eighth seed. And they took down first seeded Nosset last night, 17 to nine in eight innings. Yeah, but on Monday they went and they burned their uh, number one, I think. Cornigan or something. Yes. He got toasted uh, in the first two innings. He got schlacked for five runs. He got the hook. So I don't know whether he'll be available. What's the pitching rules, pitch count rules in the playoffs? I could talk about that in just a second. Right back to the pitcher. Throw to first in time. One to three for out number one. That'll bring up Cam Jarrett. Uh, on the other side of the playoff picture in the South Division two semifinals. You got Milton and Plymouth South who will square off tomorrow in Milton. But the pit, as far as the pitch count rules, if it is 
80 or above, you need four days rest. I think their ace, North Attleboro's ace, uh, did not throw 80. I, I wouldn't believe. They probably hooked him because he's getting shelled. So he's probably available, but Josh Fisher is not. Zero percent chance of rain tomorrow, so maybe it'll rain. <laughs> Swing and a miss. As Kevin Garnett said, anything's possible. Oh, all right, here, here we go. 71 to 115 pitches, you need four days rest. Yeah, well, if I were North Attleboro's manager and my ace was getting shelled, he'd be out before 71. All right. And there's a strike. If it's 56 to 70 pitches, you need three days rest. 41 to 55, two days. 26 to 40, one day. And one to 25, no rest. You'd go the next day. Maybe they go with the college pitch rules. Well, they did uh, change the rules a little bit this season as far as pitching and uh, went with the format that is pretty much the format throughout most of the country. It'll bring up Tyler Morse to the plate. Bases Na clear, two down. National Federation of High School Associations. Something like that. Yeah. Jarrett went down sort of with an in-between swing, foul tipped it, and in the mitt of Kinberg. A little high. Since the floor has come in, he's settled down these Hiller's hitters a bit. Yeah. Tyler Morse looks like he's uh, sort of a target. He's had a lot of pitches he's got to get away from. Like that one. <laughs> yeah. Two and oh. Maybe he's got that look the pitchers don't like. Mr. Waters is uh, swinging a bat on deck. They lift and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got in on his fist. More so for one so far today. Does have a walk. They lift and the pitch. Inside. Three and one. By the lack of noise, I imagine that girls' softball game is over by now. I don't have any skin in that game. That's fouled off. They'll fill up the count. It's about the eighth ball Morse has put over our way. He's trying to give us some souvenirs. Floor takes a long look in and is set to deal. Three, four, five up for DR. The walk is drawn. In their bottom part of the seventh inning. Johnny Waters. Yep. John Waters stepping in for Brian Gunn. Is it John or Johnny? I think either way it works. All right. We'll have to, you'll have to ask him that. But I'll go by I'll go by John. That's what the roster says. Uh, sounds better, Johnny. I think. That's just my opinion. Well, his teammates are let calling let Morse so. go. Let him take off. Get good speed. Bit of a healthy lead. Throw over. Slides back safely. He's been put in a few times this year for pinch running situations. Ooh. And notifying the umpire of the change. Coach Samos before this at bat had a long discussion with his team. Probably imparting some 30 years of knowledge on him. That is in the dirt, gets by the catcher and Morse advances on the wild pitch. That's as good as a steal, Tom, right? Certainly is. Kinberg's had a lot of work today.
Big difference in blocking skills between Kinberg and Locke. Huge dope. <laughs> Lafleur takes a look at second. Another look. And now deals. Fouled away into the backstop. One and one. Mendoza are trying to keep the runner close to second base. I don't think they're going to try a play. High and inside, and the That's throw to why. second gets into center field. Morse will stay put as it's quickly gathered up. His arm isn't that good to throw it down. I don't think 127 the throw down, feet. I don't think the throw down was really necessary. He was turning back towards second almost immediately. Yeah, but. All right, you're down four nothing. You throw it 127 feet in the outfield. He gives up a base. Uh, I don't know what that was all about. So oh, Mendoza keep clapping the glove. Leg lift and the pitch fouled into the backstop. It's right on that pitch, just missed it. Two and two. Cam Mulvaney do up, shall waters reach. Well, it's nice to see them wearing cleats as opposed to turf shoes. Outside. That's one of the benefits for playing on grass. Full count. Well. Morse wants to take off. Kindred would have to throw around Waters. Into the backstop. The battle continues. Good battle here between John Waters and the pitcher for Dayton Rehoboth LaFleur. Which of these umpires get $100 for a playoff game? <laughs> I'm not Probably sure. 75 to, with non-playoff game. And that's going to get by the catcher. And the runner is going to advance to third as Morse rounds third, thinking about home, but he'll retreat. Second time Morse has advanced on a wild pitch. And it's also a walk for Waters. So he wins that battle, and now you got Cam Mulvaney stepping in. Mulvaney on the day, one for one with a run scored. Got to be patient, his RBI is only 90 feet away. He's been hit by a pitch and walk today as well. Morse can get a nice juicy lead down there at third. The Third baseman is way off the bag. Pick over. Not in time. I think Morse thought about taking off. But you see how far the third baseman is away so he can get that equal distance down the line with two out. Doesn't have to worry about lining out and getting doubled up. Up high. Good lead by Waters over there. A hair outside. Two and oh. Kindred's go Kinberg's gonna have a little talk with LeFleur. That was very nice of that. Where did you get that water? I've had it. <laughs> oh, snake. Very nice of that fan to offer us an iced tea and a soft drink. Certainly was. So we get a discussion on the mound between the 
Titan Rehoboth battery mates and Coach Simos taking an opportunity to talk to his base runners. John Waters on first, Tyler Morse on third. Two outs in the inning. A 2-0 count on Mulvaney. Well, I want to see what happens if uh, Waters takes off. Will Kinberg throw through? Or will he zip it back to the pitcher? Into the backstop. Just a little bit late. Waters got a very big smile on his face. I don't know whether he's giving anything away. The 2 1. And he got a piece of that runner from first. Waters takes off. I'd say that was a smart move there by the catcher, uh, Kinberg. Kinberg. Yeah, maybe that's, that's why he was smiling. He got the delayed steal sign. The Fleur could drop in a curveball here. A little outside. Nothing curvy about that. Count is full. Top of the order, do up shall Mulvaney reach. Fleur deals, and this is hit in the air, left side, that'll get down. For a hit, one run is in. Here comes Waters right behind Morris, he is in. And two runs score for the Hillers. It's a two RBI hit for Cam Mulvaney. That just sucked the life of, out of the Dighton Rehoboth regional high school fan base, student base. Cam Mulvaney having quite a day at the plate. Gets the job done again, and the Ehlers lead at six to nothing. Sinking line drive. Paharic steps in. Nice try by Supernard, but that ball was dying. Oh, Ooh. right behind him. Easy advance for Mulvaney. That was maybe a message pitch. That's as wild as we've seen today. Give up two RBIs with two out. I don't know, Tom, what do you think? I don't know. Right behind Baharik. Well, the Hiller's certainly happy to add those insurance runs. Yeah. Leg lift and the pitch. And that is going to get away, and here comes Mulvaney to score, and he will. 7 nothing Hillers. Lucky seven. Uh, they were seeded, what, fourth? Hillers were fifth, Dighton Rehoboth fourth. Hmm. It's awful quiet around here, Tom. <laughs> it's like a morgue. <laughs> the hearse just pulled up. And this is hit in the air. This could be trouble, and that'll drop in for a hit. Paharic flying around first, heading over to second. And that's where he will stop a stand-up double for Nick Baharik. Here comes the manager gonna talk to Lefleur. Dylan Locke set to step in and let's see if Lefleur will stay out there. No. Nope. We're gonna have a new pitcher for Dighton Rehoboth. So with the pitching change, we'll step aside. We're in the top of the seventh. Hiller's leading Dighton Rehoboth seven to nothing in this quarterfinals match.
Hendricks Prey, the new pitcher, as here's a swing and a miss by Locke. He came in from center field and LaFleur took a seat. I think he was uh, just a little bit rattled. And he fouls this one off. Well, he, he likes uh, to get ahead of the pitch. I was just informed some people watch the game live and they go home because they have insomnia. They watch the game in bed. Ah. Yeah. Up high. With my melodious voice, it's like a romance well, novel. I, I, can't, I can't think of a better activity than watching a Hillers baseball game. No. <laughs> Wind up and the pitch. And this is popped up. It is in fair territory and caught for the third out. But the Hillers plate three more runs, and they lead it 7 to nothing as we head to the bottom of the seventh on H camp. Yeah, you watch Dylan Locke uh, practice his throw down to second base, right off his knees. One bounce to the second baseman. You know, we got to thank Dighton Rehoboth for knocking off Duxbury. So to avenge that 2018 painful loss that uh, Hopkinton suffered at the hands of Duxbury, that two to one defeat. That is very true. Brendan Kelly started that game, went seven innings, and Duxbury tied it on a double steal. There is a ball to who's this? Mason, what's the last name? Culpa. Mason Dixon? Mason Culpa? <laughs> but you do remember that double steal, right? I do. And this is up the left side, bobbled by the third baseman, and he will reach on the error. Mason Culpa is aboard. Try to get it on the in-between hop. Couldn't quite pick it. But, uh, you know, it was interesting in that game. Two of the kids that pitched, uh, one went to Boston College, D1 school, Charlie Coons, and the other one, Pat Malampi, who came in and closed, is playing with Timothy Simos at Army D1 school. Jay LaFleur puts this up the left side, takes a couple hops, throw to first. Got him, throw to second, and a runner back safe. That was heads up play by Andrew Gaughan. Certainly was. Five to three for out number one. Culpa does push up to second. Xavier Botello to the plate. Extra large brains in that family. That was a heads up play. If Prey turned that bag, he could have found himself a uh, little red faced. <laughs> Bernie looks at second and deals. 
inside. Had a chance to talk to the home plate umpire Farrington about the hit batsmen. He said he hasn't seen that many hit batsmen in a year, let alone a game. That might have been some kind of record. I can't remember any game that I've seen, what is it, 12, 13 hit batters. DNRR down to their final two outs. But that was a two to one heartbreak at Duxbury and Hopkinton. There's a strike. They had three in a row, the Great River New Bedford Regional Vocational High. It's like a three two game loss. And then that St. Mary's State Championship game a couple of years ago. And this is gonna be a roller bobbled by the shortstop, everyone's safe. That was a tricky play to make, but a rare bobble by Paharic. Gophers over in that area today. I gotta give that an error, I'd say, Larry. It was a grass cutter. It looked like it had a true bounce, or lack of a true bounce. It was a, like it cut the grass, and maybe he picked his head up a little bit. There's Colby McCarthy, the DH. Two on, one out. And that is going to be up the right side. Throw over to second, throw back to first, not in time, and a run scores. Well, the shutout is gone. But we'll trade the out for the run. Absolutely. Well, we, I mean, not, I don't play, but Hopkins will trade the out for the run. Two away. Titan Rehoboth it down to their final out. And now... Agresti, Mickey Agresti will step in. Now, I don't know whether, um, was there a tag? Was it a tag play there? Is that what they're discussing? Well, they got the runner going a second. I think they were talking if they got the double play. Oh, no. I, I think uh, Andrew Gunn did not step on first. He, he got the lead runner, so they must have got the tag. Bernie working from the stretch. There's a strike. 7 1 Hiller's lead. Gotta like Mike Bernie. He's coming in from the Arctic, coming in from the cold. He's mowing down these DRRRR hitters. Ooh, a little yeah. inside there. Almost adds to the uh, hit batsman parade. I wonder if it's something about this field today. I don't know. Are you saying it's haunted? Yeah, the mound looks a little choppy. Maybe they're tripping. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's very, very quiet. And this is up the left side. Glove by the third baseman. Long throw to first. In time, and the Hillers win. And they are on to the sectional semifinals to host North Attleboro tomorrow. A 7-1 to Hillers win here today at Dighton Rehoboth. <coughs> Vinny uh, Purpura pitched a great game. And it was a game that featured many strange elements, a lot of hit batters. But a game that the Hillers defense and pitching got him through. Perpero went five solid innings, giving up two hits. No runs, walking four, striking out six. Mike Bernie came in to close it out. He went an inning and two thirds, giving up a run that was unearned and had a strikeout as the Hillers get the seven to one victory over Dighton Rehoboth. Larry, any final thoughts on this one? Well, somebody called me up, a former player's father called me up and said, what do you think the chances are of uh, the Hillers beating this uh, Dighton Rehoboth regional high school team? I said, I'll give you a 55% chance they'll beat them. I've got some crow to eat because it was a total domination from beginning to end. They showed total poise throughout the game in a, you know, In a, in a uh, field where their uh, student body was, similar to that Stoughton game we had a couple of years ago. And uh, they just went out and did what they were supposed to do.
They certainly did, and they get the victory. They're on to the sectional semifinals to take on North Attleboro. That game will take place on Friday at Hopkinton. Time to be determined. Right now it's listed at four, but that is subject to change. But the Hillers get the 7-1 to one victory over Dighton Rehoboth and on to the sectional semifinals they go. As the Hillers put up seven runs on six hits, commit three errors. As for Dighton Rehoboth, one run on two hits and one error. Vinny Perpera, the winning pitcher, save goes to Mike Burney. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. The final score for the final time, the Hillers defeat Dighton Rehoboth 7-1 to and advance to the sectional semifinals. We'd like to thank everyone for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody.